fellow NSAers. You know, as a former international airline captain, I've flown people to some of the most gorgeous places around the world. And the overwhelming majority of those flights were smooth and uneventful, which is just how you want them to be. But every once in a while, we'd run into some bad weather, and we'd have just a rocking and rolling turbulent ride. But folks, that's the way it goes. Because sometimes to get to that ideal place in life, whether it's in your travels or in your professional, even your personal lives, you got to be able to navigate through that turbulence and come out on the other side. Now, I can't load you all up on an airplane this morning, but I do want to take you on a flight with me back in time to when I was having a very turbulent ride. But learning how to navigate through that turbulence became the foundation for any success that I've enjoyed in life. And so I'd like you, if you can, to go back in your lives to about that same period of time to when you were around 14 years old Back when all you had to do to lose weight was to take a bath. <laughs> but more specifically, to your very first day of high school. So by a show of hands, how many of you can actually remember that day? All right, some of you older folks are pretty good. You'd be great in that Prevagen commercial. <laughs> but if you were like most kids, it was an exciting day for you. Because you were finally going to be recognized, at least in your mind, as a real teenager. Now, of course, the year before you were 13, technically a teenager, but not really treated like one because you're still in middle school. But 14 in high school, you were a teenager for real. And at that age, that's a big deal. But again, if you were like most kids, you were probably a little apprehensive because you're going to a new and bigger school with older kids and you were going to be the incoming class. And what do we call a new class in high school? Anybody, help me out. Freshman, yeah! Or as the bullies used to say, fresh meat. So an exciting day, but maybe just a little intimidating too. Well, folks, I was excited about my first day of high school. And I was a little apprehensive for those same reasons, but for another reason as well. You see, I grew up in a small southern town, Orangeburg, South Carolina. <laughs> Back when segregation was still the law of the land. It was at a time and in a place where for a young black kid like myself, opportunities were few. And I was one of 12 African Americans in a student body of 1,200 who were integrating what had been all white, Orangeburg High. And folks, I will never forget my first day of school. You see, there were only two high schools in my hometown. There was Wilkerson High School, the black high school, which was only two blocks over from where I lived. And then there was a much nicer Orangeburg High School, the white high school. But it was over on the other side of town, and we were going to have to be bus to get over there. Well, I left home on my first day of school. I went down to the end of the block to wait for that bus. I was by myself because I was the only kid in my neighborhood crazy enough to go to Orangeburg High. After waiting for a few minutes, I noticed off in the distance several police cars with their lights flashing headed in my direction. I thought, wow, that must be a big accident on up the road. Imagine my shock when that caravan of police cars and the school bus stopped right in front of me. This was my federal marshal and state trooper escort on my first day of high school. Well, I got on the bus, we picked up a few more kids, and then we headed on over to Orangeburg High. I'm sitting there thinking, wow, this is so cool to have a police escort just to go to high school. Man, I didn't know the white kids had it so good. <laughs> we rode for about 15 minutes, and as we came around a curve, Orangeburg High came into view, and our official welcoming committee was there to greet us. A baseball bat, axe handle wielding, angry mob who rushed up and began to pound on the side of the bus before the cops could come in and push them all back. And they were yelling and screaming obscenities and racial slurs and telling us that we didn't belong over here that we should go back to our own side of town. And as we got off the bus and walked down through these two lines of screaming humanity, being threatened, being called names, and puh, being spat upon, folks, I gotta tell you, turn around and get back on that bus seemed to be the smart thing to do. But it wouldn't have been in keeping with the core principles that my mom and dad, William Pearl Thompson, had taught me. Principles like integrity, keeping your word and doing what you say you're going to do, 
like discipline, always finishing what you started, both parts of the principle of excellence, doing the very best that you can do. And so despite the fear, and the fear was real, we didn't turn around and get back on that bus. And because of those ingrained core principles, I couldn't turn around and get back on that bus. And that was day one of four of the toughest, most turbulent, but in many respects, the most enlightening four years of my life. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I'd been prepared to navigate through that turbulence by both of my parents, but especially my mom. You know, sometimes early in life, we learn lessons to stay with us for a lifetime. Can anybody else relate to that? Yeah. Well, my mama taught me the importance of doing an excellent job when I was just seven years old. You see, washing the dishes used to be one of my chores. Now, before that, I didn't mind washing the dishes. In fact, playing around in the soapy, bubbly water was kind of fun until they made it a chore. And then not so much. Well, it was a Saturday morning. We'd had a late breakfast and I'm busy doing my chores because my neighborhood buddies are right outside my screen door waiting for me on the back porch. You see, we had a Saturday morning ritual where we'd go over to Wilkinson High and we'd play pickup football against another group of neighborhood kids. But on Saturday mornings, we'd hop the fence and play on the varsity football field. Well, I'm running late. I'm holding up the show, so I'm rushing to get these dishes done. When my mom walks by and picks up a fork that I had just washed, still had a little grit stuck on it. She said nicely, honey, this fork's still dirty. You didn't do a very good job. I said, give it to me, mama, I'll wash it again. She said, yes, you will, sweetheart. And all these other dishes that you've already washed. Whoa, folks, I'm halfway through these dishes and I've got people to see, places to go and things to do. Because I'm going to start running back on our neighborhood team. So I protest, Mama, please, no. She said, hey, you didn't do a good job with the fork. How can I trust that you've done a good job with the rest of the dishes? She said, sweetheart, do your best the first time. You'll never have to do a job over again. Folks, <laughs> having washed all those dishes over again, seared into my psyche the importance of excellence. Defined very simply as doing the very best you can the very first time. And over time, my parents instilled in me a culture of excellence, a culture which seven years later helped me navigate through that turbulence at Orangeburg High. Now, I knew when I went over there, things were gonna to be tough. Some days were gonna be better than others. I knew that most people were gonna judge me simply because I had a better and a natural tan. But I also knew that William Pearl expected me to do my best, even when I was having a bad day. And folks, that's a skill that we've all got to master to enjoy any significant long-term success. Let me ask you a question. If you got on that Delta airplane with me, and I'm not having my best day, wouldn't you still expect me to fly that jumbo jet with excellence? <laughs> yeah, of course you would. Can you imagine? Let's say you're taking your family on vacation to Hawaii. That's one of the trips I used to do. We take off out of LAX, climb out and level off at 37,000 feet out over the Pacific Ocean. I come on the microphone in my very confident captain's voice. And I say, well, we're gonna try to get you out to Honolulu tonight. So. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I'm really not having that great a day. Folks, you wouldn't feel very comfortable sitting in the back of that airplane, would you? You know, it's been said that some people are successful in their life because they're destined to be. But I'm here to tell you from personal experience that most people are successful in life because they've made a conscious decision, because they've made a choice to be. My daddy, bless his soul, used to say, son, success is seldom the result of natural gifts and talents. Folks, he was a school teacher. He had two masters. And he'd say, it's not even about educational level a more than average intelligence, but it is about a commitment to excellence. He'd say, William, if you do your best, you're gonna do better than most because most people aren't gonna give you their best. Most people aren't committed to excellence. Folks, our short flight today has been an introduction to this concept of a culture of excellence because you see, we all have excellence in us. It's about understanding that you can get what you want in your business or your profession, even your personal lives 
if you just learn how to develop the discipline to consistently do your best. Because that's what our journey through life is all about. Successfully navigating through that turbulence as you pilot your flight to excellence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Teague.